Hey guys, today we're going to start modeling periodic behavior. So a function is called periodic. If it has a pattern of y values that repeat at regular intervals, so there has to be a pattern and it has to repeat. One complete pattern is called a cycle. And a cycle can begin at any point on the graph. So if I'm looking at this graph here, I kind of see it keeps repeating itself. So if I take my peak here and I go down, up, down, up. Now I'm going to start to repeat. Down, up, down, up. Down, up, down, up. So that single pattern is called one cycle. Once it starts to repeat, then the pattern is done. Right? The wavelength is the horizontal length of one cycle, so that's called the wavelength. We're not going to use that a whole lot uh, today and tomorrow, um, but you will hear that quite frequently uh, in future courses. The period is the interval needed to complete one cycle. So on here, I drew those cycles starting at one and it went up to five. Well, what's the length of that? Well, what's five minus one? Well, that's just four. So this one had a period of four. The periodic function is a series of events that are regularly repeated, started from one point and report turning to the same point in the same way every time. Okay, so that's not too scary, right? Now let's look at a few different examples here. So here I have the graph showing the pressure and the volume of blood in the left ventricle of the heart uh, and how it varies over five consecutive heartbeats. So what is the period of this graph? So that just means I have to figure out where one cycle starts and ends. So if I start at the beginning here and I go down, over, up, now I'm going to repeat. Down, oops, over, up, repeat down, over, up, repeat. So I've got a repeating pattern happening, so it's definitely periodic, okay? And to figure out the period of the graph, well, you have to look at how long it is. So I'm repeating, let's see, I'm in these first four squares here. Five squares takes me to one, so let's see, one divided by five, well, that's 0 0.2. So if I have four squares here, four times 0 0.2, oh, my cycle is 0 0.8 seconds long, 0 0.8 seconds long. Now, is that the same down below? Sure it is. Let's see. Up, loopy, oh my goodness, that's a cool shape. And then it repeats. Oops. Up, around, and then somewhere in here, it starts repeating. We're up. So that's really cool. So they both have the same period. Of course, it's the same heart. Here I have a graph. There's my cycle there. Okay, so I've got two complete patterns being shown. I start here, I go up, over, down, new pattern. Up, over, down, new pattern. Oh, okay. so this graph has a period of, let's see, from zero until seven. So it has a, a, a period of 7. Find the value of f at 4. Okay, well, that's no big deal. But remember, that means that x is 4. 4. Find y. Well, there's 4. Read up. Read over. Oh, that's okay. f at 4 equals 1. All right. How about f at 19? Okay, well, that's fine. Let's just do oh. Well, I don't, I don't, I don't have a 19. Okay, well, let's, you know what, let's backtrack a little here. If I know the cycle is 7, let's back from 19. So what's 19 minus 7 equal? Well, that's 12. So backtrack to 12, and the value at 19 is going to be equal to the value at 12, because they are an equal distance apart compared to the period. So my f at 19 is the same value as f at 12, which is zero. So that brings us to our next really important point. A function f is periodic if there exists a positive number p such that f at x equals, oops, f at x plus p for every x in the domain of f. 
So the smallest positive value p is the period of the function. So that means that every period is going to have the same y value. Now, in terms of thing, a few more important words, we've got a couple more important words here. Amplitude. In any periodic function, the amplitude is defined as half the dif distance, half the difference between the max and min values. So in other words, the amplitude is half of the total height. Okay, so the maximum values occur at the top. We'll call that a peak. We can call that the crest, so the top of the crest. And the minimum values occur at the bottom of the trough. Okay, the equation of the axis of rotation, um, that's also called the axis of equilibrium. So that's the line halfway between the maximum and the minimum. So we've got a couple of little calculations here that we have to make sure that we know. Okay, so the axis, well, that's going to involve our maximum and our minimum. So you're going to take your maximum, you're going to add it to your minimum, and you're going to divide it by 2. Your amplitude is almost the exact same equation. So it's going to take your maximum minus your minimum, because it's the difference, divided by 2. So your amplitude is your difference, your axis is your average. So what does that look like? So here I have a sinusoidal wave. See how it has a nice little curvy wave? Determine the coordinates of the first peak. So there's a peak here. Here's another peak. Here's another peak. Okay. And trough. So the trough is what we call this bottom piece. So there's a trough. There's a trough. There's a trough. We also want to figure out our period, the amplitude, and the equation of the axis of symmetry, um, axis of equilibrium. Oh boy, it's got so many names. Axis of symmetry of this periodic function. Okay, let's do it. So our peak, our first peak is happening at 0, 10, and our first trough is happening at 1, negative 10. The period is the length of one cycle, so the period ends at 2. It started at 0, so our period is equal to 2. The amplitude, well, that's this height here. So it's half the distance, half the height. So there's my amplitude. Okay, so let's calculate that one because they aren't always nicely balanced like this. Amplitude, so we said that's your max minus your min divided by 2. So our maximum is 10. Our minimum is negative 10. Divide that by 2. Let's see, 20 over 2 is 10. So this one was our maximum up here. That was at my peak. My minimum was down here. That was at my trough. So I took my maximum and my minimum, subtracted them, and away I went. Um, axis of symmetry. So our axis is going to be our maximum plus our minimum and divided by 2. So I'm going to take my 10 plus my negative 10 divided by 2. 10 minus 10 is 0. And our axis of symmetry is going to be at y oops, equals 0. Okay, so there's all our cool pieces. Uh, yeah, that was all of them. Let's do example 4. Oh, it's the Ferris wheel. I love the Ferris wheel. Okay, let's see what we can see with this Ferris wheel. All right, let's see what it looks like. So we've got, um, so somebody's put this together, Geometry Sketchpad, I think it is. They created a Ferris wheel, so there's my really cool looking Ferris wheel. The person is sitting on the red circle, and watch this. Goes past the middle, goes around and around and around. There's the top, back down, there's the middle, and down to the bottom height and repeat. 
up to the middle, up to the top, down to the middle. So that middle is going to be our axis of symmetry, our maximum, our minimum, ignore everything else they're saying. So what did we see? We saw that the maximum height happened up at the top here. We saw that the minimum height happened down here. We saw that the center heights all happened around our axis of equilibrium. So all these kind of words that we're talking about here are matching it. And the time it took for the person to take a whole loop all the way around, well, that was one cycle. That was the period. So that got them from the start to the end, and then they start to repeat. So that one loop was one cycle, and our period was how long it took, which was 11. Okay. So here I have two graphs. I have an amusement park. A math teacher had two different students ride different Ferris wheels. Um, somebody's on Ferris wheel A, Ryan's on Ferris wheel B, the teacher collect data, we produce graphs, we love graphs, let's interpret them. Well, there's my maximum here on this one. So my max is at 13. Here's the minimum down here. So that's when the person gets on the ride, right? The lowest part of the ride. So I have a maximum, I have a minimum. So if I have those, I can figure out my amplitude and my axis. So the axis is max plus min divided by 2. So 13 plus 1 over 2, 14 over 2, that gives me 7. So I can draw a line through at 7, and that should be the middle line. So it's, so, so the axis, that's that's the middle. Okay, so at y equals 7, that's my middle line here, y equals 7, that's my axis, okay, my amplitude is the distance from that line, oops, from that line up to the top, or down to the bottom, so my amplitude is going to be my max minus my min, and divide it by 2. So let's see, that would be 13 minus 1 over 2, 12 over 2, oh, 6. And if I can't that out, oh yeah, my amplitude is 6. Nice. And what's left? Oh, the period. How long does one cycle last for? So it goes from here, so there's my start. There's where I end, and I'm ending at 40 seconds. So the period is 40 seconds. And I think could have counted that from anywhere. I could have done from 30 to 70. Well, the difference there is 40. So there you go. There's the period. How about this one? Well, let's see. I go up and down again. I have a maximum of 7. Max is 7. I have a minimum down here of 1. So the middle line in between here, I can see that it's happening at 4, and let's just check, right? We should always check, make sure that we're calculating things properly. So my axis is max plus min divided by 2. 7 plus 1 divided by 2 gives me 8 over 2. Oh yeah, that's 4. So y equals 4. There's my axis. Good. Okay. And what's left? Axis. Oh, my amplitude. So my amplitude for this one is max minus min divided by 2. And what's that? 7 minus 1 over 2 gives me 6 over 2. So uh, 3. 1, 2, 3. There's my amplitude. 1, 2, 3. There's my amplitude. Cool, eh? Oh, and how long does this ride last for? Sorry. One cycle, so I start here, start at zero, and here. And at, what's that? Oh, 40 seconds again. So therefore, the period 
And this one also is 40 seconds. Cool. All right, let's move on to the last very important thing. So what we've seen even just right here, this is periodic, but it's also called sinusoidal. And why is that the case? Well, we have a very important sine curve that we want to make sure that we know and understand and can handle. So you can type this into your calculator if you want. You can look at it in terms of a circle if you want. There's so many different ways that we can look at how to get these about. If I do sine of zero, I end up with zero. If I do sine of 90, I end up with one. If I do sine of 180, I end up at zero. If I do the sine of 270, I end up at negative one. And if I do sine of 360, I end up at zero. Pretty cool, eh? And then 45 degree triangle, guess what? Sine of 45? It's 0.7. 135, that's 0.7. 225, negative 0.7. And 315 is negative 0.7. Okay, so what's that going to look like when we graph it? Well, let's see. 0 is at 0. 180 is also at 0. 360 is also at 0. 90 was 1. 45.7, yeah, that's somewhere in there. Let's see, 135, yeah, that's somewhere in there. Okay, let's see, 225.7, negative 0.7 is somewhere in there. 270, there's a negative 1. 315.7 is somewhere in there, sure, and then 0. So what you get is this nice curvy pattern. It's not easy to draw a nice curvy pattern. I have a tendency to start at the top and kind of curve my way around. No, I'm not very good at this. I'm doing it electronically is so much harder. Yeah, something like that. It's better I fixed it. So you can see this nice curvy pattern. Notice how it increases, decreases, decreases, increases. Properties of sine curve, is it a function? Yes, it most certainly is. Is it continuous? Yes. So continuous, remember you draw it without lifting your pen. And function, yep, it passes our vertical line test. In terms of our domain, there is never any restriction on this one. So x is any real number. In terms of the range, there is restriction, right? Because you have a minimum value of negative 1. So less than or equal to y, less than or equal to, we have a maximum value of 1. So we do have to take into consideration that I have a minimum and I have a maximum. Okay. Our minimum value, oops, too far. Well, that's at negative 1. So there's 270. So at 270 degrees, y is equal to negative 1. And our, oops, wrong column. Okay, so that was your minimum. Our maximum we can see is happening at 90 and 1. So when x is equal to 90 degrees, y is equal to positive 1. So that's our maximum value. And again, it keeps repeating. Our amplitude is just 1. The period we repeat every 360 degrees. So it's going around a circle. Remember, like when we drew the diagram, there's my 0 degrees. And then I hit it again, and there's my 360 degrees. And then you keep going around and around and around and around. Well, you're repeating yourself. It's 360 degrees. Our x-intercepts, we had several of them. We had it at 0, 180, and 360. 0 degrees, 180 degrees, 360 degrees. So with sine, remember, that was our y value. So y is 0, y is 0, y is 0, y is 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Okay, and our y-intercept is at 0, 0 right here. And that, my friends, is the sine curve, which is a very important curve, and we're going to transform it tomorrow. And we're going to do some cool things with it. Good stuff.